Like you're super successful, but it's way different than I'm assuming what it looked like. When we you already told me, yeah. But the way you're super successful right now, like you're really popping, but it's way different than you imagined. Yes. How did you get here? I mean, just going back to making the music with hot boys and being in New Orleans, mm -hmm. like and being here, mm -hmm. right? Like, not I don't want to ask if you did you would you see yourself here, but like how did that journey come about to this point? Yep. So I just dedicated myself to excellence in my craft and diligence in my walk with God mm. simultaneously, not not one without the other. Because I did that, I've become great at the skill, at using the skills that God gave me, but I've also become proficient at making sure that God is there for every step of my journey and of my 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 uh my come up. So that way it makes it to where I've seen a lot of doors shut in my face. I've seen a lot of rejection. A lot of people who told me, You're not quite good enough to be on this. We can't sign you to this label. Nah, I can't do this feature with you. Nah, you can't be on this platform. You know, I've heard a lot of no's, but because of my diligence to being great at my craft. And to walk on with God every step of the way, it's made it to where any level of success I achieve, instantly, everybody in this world knows, well, I didn't put D in that position. Mm. God opened that door for him. Mm. And that right there is, I think, what truly makes God smile. When he's like, yo, I'm going to make your success be set up in a way to where you can't even speak about where you've gotten to without mentioning what I did for you. Mm. And I think that's what that's what's been important for me, bro. Like at one time I was chasing buzzwords like I want to be signed to a major record label. I want to go platinum one day. I want to do features with Lil Wayne and with Nas and with just whoever I was looking up to at the time, right? And I realized that all of those things that I wanted it's not like they really held any significance to me personally. They just sounded good to say out loud. Mm. What I really got the most peace from was just saying, I'm able to use my talents that God blessed me with of being a rapper, of being a public speaker, of being an educator, and I'm able to comfortably make a living for myself. Mm. Comfortably, when I stopped teaching, I was a middle school teacher back in Louisiana, right? I was making $39,000 a year when I stopped teaching. So for me, I learned how to be comfortable off 39 racks a year. That's before taxes. Mm. So, you know, they taking yeah. taxes out. You probably in the 20s now. I learned how to be comfortable off that. So for me, it was like, technically, if I go platinum, I won't be mad at that. But if I could just make what I'm making as a teacher off of being an artist, that would be amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? Once I recalibrated what my goals were, I started to be like, dang, I never was really married to any of those goals that I would be saying out loud. What I'm really married to is just being able to be myself and to be able to make a living off of what it is that I do. Make a living off of giving life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not make a living off of spreading hatred and death and darkness, but make a living off of giving love and light and life to people. Mm. Yo, so but when you say like you mentioned how you just kind of was attracted to these buzzwords, right? Being signed to a major label, uh, and so forth. But just understand, just knowing your story, you it ain't like from my perspective, it ain't seem like you changed so much because even coming in the game, I think. Your first hot song was like really challenging it Lil was. Wayne and the rappers yeah. from the words that they were saying. Yeah. So it ain't like you 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 made a significant change in my eyes. I don't see it. So I'm 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 wondering what was the biggest change from then to now? The level the level of peace that I had when I was signed to a major label versus the level of peace that I have now, they don't even compare to each other, bro. Mm. When I was signed. I was smiling on the outside, but dying on the inside. I contemplated suicide in real life in Nashville, Tennessee. I was really feeling like a slave to the record label that I was signed to, 
because I wasn't in control of if my music could come out or not. Mm. It wasn't up to me no more. It was up to them if they liked it, when they wanted to put it out. Now, I have so much peace because I'm able to be myself. I'm able to take a chance on whatever music I believe in and put it out. I'm about to put my 10th album out on September 1st, right? For me, the win is in finding joy throughout the process. Mm. So when I'm recording and when I'm able to use the producers that I want to and when I'm able to pick the artwork that I like and when I'm able to just be in control of that process, that's the win right there. What I realized is when I got signed, I wasn't making any more money than what I'm making now. I was actually making way less money than what I'm making now. But I realized that regardless of the money, bro, I had some of the biggest platforms of my career while I was signed. I remember being on the, uh, what they call it? The BT Hip Hop Awards, right? The Cypher. And I remember doing some, uh, some showcases for Revolt TV and all this type of stuff that was nationally televised. And I just thought that was everything. But then I realized, man, these people like me, they don't care that I'm signed or not. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for a minute that it was being signed and it was being in the industry that was making people really rock with me. But I realized that like my joy is contagious. Mm. My joy is my weapon. So I got to use that weapon everywhere that I go, whether I'm signed or not signed. Like, nobody nobody really cares about that stuff. And in terms of being independent, a lot of artists, they don't want to, they don't want to admit that you have to have business acumen mm. to be in, independent. And that business acumen is something that, thankfully, I'm a double threat because not only am I a talented artist, but... I've been a formally trained businessman since college. My my degree, I got a degree in business administration mm. with a concentration in marketing. You know, so I've been knowing and understand with this stuff. I just had to take a chance on myself and believe that I was worthy of the mental, emotional, financial investment. Because if I'm not investing, we all invest in our time, our energy, and our money into something. Do we believe in somebody else's company more than we believe in ours? Do we believe in another person's idea more than ours? Do we believe in another person's creativity more than ours? And I was like, man, I only live once. If I'm too scared to chase my own dreams, then my life is worthless. Mm. But it's, it's it, 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 but we can't ignore, there's some benefit in having that back end though. That financial backing? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's benefits. What, what's the benefits? <clears throat> um, hypothetically, mm -hmm. let's say uh, more visibility, which can get you more money in the long run, right? All right. So let's say you know, I was just talking to Shorty Shorty about radio, and we as much as we can be, um, emotionally tied to the fact that we want radio support, it's a business at the end of the day. Yep. And I say that to say. When you have backing, they can put, they can dump money in different terrestrial radio stations across the country, mm -hmm. right? Which can get you more publicity, more more um, fans, and a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. And eventually, that can make you more money down the line, even if it's not in that moment. Okay, so radio is something that very few signed artists ever get a real budget for a single that gets pushed at radio. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest artists in the world that we can name right now, it's like, dang, but they're not, they not all over the radio. Why not? Shouldn't that be automatic? Once I realized that, that you could be signed and the record label could still choose not to yeah. put that bag behind your music, that's when I was like, dang, bro, like, what's the what's the benefit? No, I mean, that's facts. If you, if you come in at that artist, but it's still some, I mean, we still had them, I say for lack of better words, them hoop dreams of like, be becoming that artist like for example i don't know uh sexy red i think that's her name mm -hmm. or glorilla like these are the ones that i'm assuming that had the marketing bag right yeah you might come in and you might not be the one you might not have the leverage but if you continue to work climb the ladder you could eventually be that artist who get that budget mm, mm, that's real that's real and you got to ask yourself are you down to are you down to take that chance because along with that chance comes you got to sign a five album deal 
and you got to give away anywhere between five and maybe 15 years of your life to being signed to this label. Mm. So is that worth the possibility that they're going to say, oh, yeah, we about to put that bag behind your song. Mm. You know how many songs had that bag put behind them and that song still ain't blow up? Yeah. So not to say that it doesn't work. We clearly see radio producing hits and superstars every day, you know. But um, I feel comfortable saying, like, I tried it, and I went in the office with so many different songs. You know, when I flew up there to New York, pressed play on a whole bunch of different songs I was recording and that I was excited about that I thought would be great at radio, and I heard no time after time. Nope, mm. nope, nope, nope. I heard no everywhere. It could be nope, nope. Mm. Nah, <laughs> nah. Like I heard it's no. Like watching uh, the, uh, the what is it? Genius uh, documentary all over again when Kanye West was going into the studios. Like, nah, bro, that ain't it, bro. Literally, literally. So it's just like, all right. Uh, as far as being signed, it can definitely, it can definitely be a very powerful. Like I, I'm in. I'm just gonna tell you, I'm in a position now where anything that the record label could pay for for me you know what i'm saying i could pay for it on my own mm. so then it's like do you believe in yourself enough to put that bag up behind yourself mm-hmm. and not many people do you know but that's not a position i was in when i got signed dog when i got signed like i needed that money i needed that advance mm. you know and i'm gonna i'm gonna really go in depth in terms of telling people what my experience was like, why I signed and what I signed for and what I went through or what I got from it. I'm going to really go in depth in terms of telling people that because there was always just this curtain up and I was so curious, like, man, what's behind that curtain of being signed? Like, what's it really like? And not just the horror stories, but like, tell me the 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 good, the bad and the ugly, you know, and I didn't really have that information. Mm. All I had was the success stories. All I had was, dang, I looked up to Cash Money, and they signed to Universal. So them signing to Universal must be what got them there, you know. But I'm not hearing about all the other labels and the other artists who signed too, who for every one Cash Money, how many other labels and artists you think didn't make it? No, that's a lot. Probably probably, probably 10 don't make it for every one that does make it, Yeah, you know. Wait, so how much who you signed to again? I signed first? to RCA Records. How much they give you? They gave me some, you know, some some little bread, you know what I mean? How much they give they you? Had, uh, how much you think they gave me? Uh I, my the first day that came out, I would say, uh, like say 20 or 25. Oh no, no, we came for more than that. Yeah. I I ain't going I ain't I ain't going Wait, how nah, much I know is, I know the baby recently, I mean, he, he got said 250. I saw that. He said I think he said he got 250. 250? For signing and oh, I then, he, it was say, and okay, then he, he said And then he said he went to the uh what you call it? So this is what 10 Plus years ago, I signed. Uh, I signed ten years ago, exactly ten. So how much? I they signed got? ten years ago. You said you weren't going depth with it. How much they drop? <laughs> <laughs> like he heard in depth, he said, "Oh, I'm about to get the whole story how, how out deep." Man, just know that the amount of money that they gave me at the time, it. You might just say the number. It now. quadrupled my net worth. You know what I'm saying? Like I like it. It was. It, it made it to where like I needed that. I needed that bread and. When I got when I got in advance, ironically, it wasn't it wasn't like a oh I made it type of moment. It was just like I could breathe now. Bro, are you writing a book or something? Cause why you ain't trying to yeah, tell me? Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, bro, going? yeah, yeah. I'm about to put my first book out, but that's for the kids. That's a children's book. But I got yeah, bro. I got okay, like cause a, I'm like, bro, what is, what are you hiding? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. funny. It's funny how um, how people. Think that you get so, so, so much money when you get signed. Like, them days are over with, bro. Mm. 